everybody! We're Jess and Freddie, and Winnie of course, and we've embarked on a six month home renovation of our London house. After years of saving and two years living here, we took the plunge and knocked down a few walls and added a new floor in the loft. It is chaos and we're living through our build and sharing all the highs and lows of taking on a home repo project. my channel we are so on the final stretch now it is so exciting so as usual i thought i would start the vlog with a couple of updates in the house because now every day huge changes are being made as they really are almost at the finish line so i'm just stood in my new kitchen still not usable yet so i think we're now going on like the nine week mark of not having a kitchen I don't know how we've actually done that. Like, I think that once you get into it, you just get used to it because if someone had said to me that at the start, I would be like, I'm moving out, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so, I'm just gonna stop my dog from barking because it's 6.30 in the morning right now. Okay. I told her that the builder was here um, to stop her barking in the garden and now she's expecting him to be here. Sorry, Poppy, it was a lie. Michael's not here. Look, nobody, nobody. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, back to the updates. So the biggest change in this room this last week is that the floor went down. It's covered at the moment, just for protection. They put these straps on there just to kind of really like bond it together um, to avoid movement. It means we can also walk on it at the moment, which is obviously very handy. My builder's just done a fab job, look at this. He's also been like really considerate and of connecting up as best he can the grooves between each plank which do you know what i didn't even ask him to do in here as well so like that's the plank divide and he's managed to get that very close he just he just knows his stuff you know kitchen i showed you this last week and we got that cabinet sorted so that was the whole saga with ren and not measuring the steel and sending a cabinet that was 2250 in height so they replaced it literally no questions asked immediately with the 207 which is this my builder still had to shave a tiny bit off the base that plinth along the bottom would be the same height everything in this room is now plastered so we've got a big job on our hands to be painting this it needs it's like straight to plaster paint first and then pick a paint for the wall so this is lick beige 03 which is what we're doing in the rest of the house i'm actually working with lick which is so exciting they've given me paint for the hallway which is in this color and now i can't decide whether i'm going to buy the same one for the kitchen to keep it very like cohesive or go for a different color this is pure white i think it's maybe not right and then this is an ot white this is white 05 I really like that, but my fear against pure white, it might look a bit magnolia. Guys, I'm allergic to magnolia, so we can't go there. Another angle of the kitchen here. By the way, I'm just obsessed with all these lines. They're just the boxed in steels. And then when you stand here, you've got the two doorways, which just looks so nice as well. And they've lined up the units to go straight through this archway here, which is into our little fridge zone here and pantry zone here. We actually said as well, we we got that £30 pantry off Facebook Marketplace, which I'll pop a little video of in here. And obviously bargain. We've said now we might actually just extend all of this and keep going in the future and have like a big cube square cupboards instead. But for now it's going to be the pantry that I'll upcycle. No light in the utility at the moment, but washer dryers going double stack here in built-in carpentry. And then that is our boiler housed in that cupboard. Okay, so when you walk into the utility room, the light comes on. It's a sensor. Love that. And I think it's like a five minute sensor. Then it will go off when I leave. So, little update in the utility. The floor and skirting is in. Belfast sink is in. So this just needs to be plumbed in now. I've ordered some tiles for the backsplash there and then I've got some handles to go on here as well so hopefully that's all going to arrive this week and we can get this room finished a little little room but she's high functioning we are so ready for a fridge again we've not had a proper working fridge for a long time um that actually kept all our food cool so what a luxury that's going to be when that's plugged in 
welcome to my new fridge, the cube. She is beautiful. I love that the fridge is the upper half as opposed to like 50-50 fridge freezer. It's fridge and then two freezers here. Also, I love that these are individual doors so you don't need to open the whole freezer when you're getting something out. We've left this side empty because we're not even using it yet. And it's just beautiful. The top bits are sliding shelves and then you've got two drawers on each side. This is so cool. So this is a humidity box for veg. I haven't really put anything away properly yet because we actually have like no food. Um, this keeps vegetables hydrated. So it puts like, it's like a humid box. And then this one is a dry box. So it's for meat and stuff. So it stops things going off. Also has an antibacteria technology in it. So that it stops food in general going off. That sounds wild, but it definitely said that on the description. So I will link it below where I got it, but I spent so long researching a fridge. It is the coolest thing ever. Like it's such a luxury having this fancy fridge, but we have gone without for so long, we thought we'd treat ourselves and treat we did because she is a beauty. This here, this is into our hallway. We still need to get a fire door for this area. The reason we need fire doors is because we've added an additional floor. So build and control state that every single livable room, kitchen, living room, and bedrooms have to have fire safety doors. So it's like FD30. So you've got 30 minute protection if fire did start. I would like a beautiful crystal style steel door for this space. And it's starting to cost the earth, so I'm not sure if it's going to be feasible or if we just leave it for a while, save up, and then just get our certificate a bit later on, once we can afford to put the door in. Yesterday, these pipes got boxed in, so plastering's going to be finished in the hallway today. Skirting's going to go on, radiator's going to get fitted there. And then this is like the kind of entrance area, front door. And then this is the hallway. I'm going to do a nice like, bench detail here, coat hooks and shoe storage, probably a mirror. And then... So they put the tiles in today, look at that marbly wall, and the floor has gone in as well. It's just, just the same floor as out here, they just are keeping it covered as much as they can. And it just seamlessly goes through into the downstairs toilet. And then this is all set up for the toilet to be plumbed in tomorrow. Look at that, oh my god, I am obsessed. This is from Tile Flare, so they come as 1.2 meter slabs, so they've had to do a little seam here. And then the other seam is here, which you can barely see, which I love. So, it's a whole wall of marble. And yeah, this room is still a mess. <laughs> We're gonna really do this last. Once we move our kitchen back into our kitchen, then we will focus on doing paint touch-ups and reorganizing that furniture, Winnie, yeah? So we are just on our way to B&Q and we're getting some paint, some final decisions on paint for the final bits of the house. So to make no errors or have any time wasted at the paint aisle, I have brought all my samples with me. So these are all my top contenders. This is what we've painted the bedroom. This is what I think I'm gonna go for in the utility room for the built-in laundry. This is the island and this is the cabinets in the kitchen. And this is the color that we're painting the hallways and the spare rooms. Don't be scared. It's gonna be fine. The decision at the paint counter. It happens every time without fail. Oh you, no. You better prepare yourself, boy. So let's go and find the perfect white for the kitchen. And I've brought the um, island color because there's a piece of MDF that they've put behind where the bar stools are gonna go. Instead of paying for a panel from Wren, we just put MDF and we're just gonna color match the paint. It's just a cost saving way on your kitchen. I feel like that is the perfect match. Ooh, decisions, decisions for that kitchen wall. Okay, I finally did it. I picked the white paint for the kitchen. I went with brushed cotton from Valspar. The reason behind it is because beige 03 from Lick, which is literally this color, they go quite nicely together, I think. And I've also just got in here a few other whites that we've got in our house. This is our bedroom white. This is the white on our banisters. So I just think that it 
tied in very nicely together. I just think they both go very nicely against the white cabinet and the charcoal island. So it's just my whole color palette coming together here. Instead of doing Lick, I'm gonna go with Farron Ball Green Smoke because I have that in the downstairs toilet already. So it will be just the one green color in the house and it will just, it will be like, you'll see it in the downstairs toilet, then you'll be re-reminded of it again in the kitchen. So it's that kind of subconscious color palette just kind of flowing through the house. So we have officially begun painting the house, which as my father-in-law said to Freddie the other day, that is the beginning of the end. And it's true, like it's the final thing that we're doing. It's a long slog. I've been painting these spindles and it just takes forever. This is my setup. I've got a very large glass of a very chilled California white wine, cheers, and my tin of paint. And off we pop. takeaway and it's arrived and I've not finished painting and Winnie will not leave the takeaway side. She just keeps slipping the bag. Uh, excuse me. Um, I need to finish this so quickly and then I can eat my takeaway. painting banisters getting absolutely covered in paint which I still can't wash off. We realised that Freddie picked the gloss primer so, <laughs> so this is all glossy and this is all matte and it's really sticky so our builders just said that we need to sand it three times before we go and get the matte primer. Banter? over it at this stage. <laughs> we are just about to start the evening shift of painting this room. It just needs one final coat and then carpets arrive tomorrow. So I'll be showing you those in next week's vlog. I feel like carpets is like the final, final thing. So it's like really coming to an end now. That's our evening and I'm gonna get to it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the updates in this vlog. I know that the last couple have just been updates. So I thought for next week, I would do a little Q and A. I actually did one on my Instagram stories the other day and I've saved them to a highlight. So if you can't be bothered to wait till next week, then go check it out at Jess Rose Home. And if you do have any questions you want me to answer, budget, financing, they seem to be the main ones. Um, how we found our builders, any kind of technical planning permission, building control questions, anything like that, whatever it is, pop it in the comments and I will try and answer a few next week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back next Monday with another video. Bye.